Ethereum Layer 2s are quite possibly the most important topic in the entire crypto space for the next three to six to maybe 12 months. This is the battleground for bringing Ethereum and by extension, the entire innovative sector of blockchain and cryptocurrency into a scalable future that can support the weight of the mainstream public. There is absolutely no battleground more important to mainstream crypto without conceding to other potentially less decentralized, less sound, less innovator-friendly environments than Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has a lot of problems, but many of those will be solved with good layer twos and scaling solutions. So today we're gonna to be looking looking at all of the different types of layer twos from optimistic rollups to ZK rollups, side chains, state channels, plasma, and more. And we're gonna be talking about the pluses and minuses, the history, the different projects operating in the space and giving you a rounded understanding of why this is so important, why it's so hard, and who is solving the toughest questions in the blockchain industry. If you guys are excited for this one, make sure you smash that like button. It really helps get this video into the good graces of the YouTube algorithm and shows this very important content to more and more viewers who desperately need to know what's really going on under the hood in blockchain land. Not only that, if you guys want more content like this, we're going to be doing deep dives and technical research on a ton of very important pressing topics, and of course, covering what I think of as the best opportunities in the space. So make sure you go ahead and you not only subscribe, but you put that bell notification on so you're made aware exactly when I put out new content. As always, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my name's Elio Trades, and you can find me with the link in the description. With that said, let's dive in. First, let's talk about sidechains. Sidechains are the first type of Ethereum scaling solution to truly hit the market. Sidechains effectively serve like sovereign layer one chains, but they have the ability to batch transactions back to the main chain if they're so called upon to do it. They also come with a series of pluses and minuses. The big drawback of sidechains is that they rely on their own consensus mechanism. So while you could have an EVM compatible sidechain that has all the ability to to batch transactions back for security purposes to the main chain. The reality is that while things are living on the side chain, they operate with their own rule sets and therefore are not as protected by the security that is Ethereum. And therefore they introduce different types of attack vectors. The pro of a sidechain is that all you have to do to access the sidechain is deposit and withdraw. So with just two transactions, you can offload really limitless transactions from the main chain. All you have to do is remove stuff from the main chain and deposit it to the sidechain, and you can begin essentially offloading entire swaths and big amounts of transactions. However, like we said, the con here is that this is pretty much an entirely new blockchain. This isn't exactly what you'd imagine by just making Ethereum faster. Many people have criticized sidechains for essentially being less censorship resistant because the sidechain itself might not be as decentralized, immutable, and open source as Ethereum. It might be more of a walled garden and harder for users to essentially control their own destiny. There's one example of a sidechain that has been extremely successful, and that is, of course, Matic, which has just become Polygon. Now, Polygon has very strong and big ambitions to become much more than a sidechain and much more closely related to Ethereum layer one. However, at the current state, they are a sidechain chain, a very popular and important scaling mechanism nonetheless, but yet this is not the end of the scaling solution debate, and there is certainly a deeper rabbit hole here. The next type of scaling solution that we're going to talk about is called state channels. Now, this is objectively one of the least popular ones, and it doesn't seem like it's really going to be the future of scaling. That said, essentially what state channels do is only broadcast the most necessary and critical information to the main chain. So one example would be if you were actually having a chess game on the blockchain, all that would get broadcast to the main chain would be the eventual outcome. As you can see, this kind of paraphrasing, if you will, presents all kinds of potential issues. Projects looking at sidechain scaling solutions include Raiden Network and Kinex. Next, let's talk about Plasma. Now, Plasma is kind of like sidechains. However, it's essentially just a bunch of Merkle trees. Now, these Merkle trees have to periodically interact with the main chain to batch back transactions and settle disputes. It's quite similar to the idea of a sidechain, but it does have some fundamental differences. Plasma is great for dealing with payments, and it's also great for NFTs because each unit of account gets its own unique ID. Also, it's the case that there is something called a block route, and these block routes can save a ton of information that's important 
to the blockchain periodically. While sidechains can in theory stop producing blocks because something happens with their consensus mechanism, the deal with Plasma is that these block routes act as save points, kind of like in a video game where you go back to your last checkpoint. Well, you can always go back to that last checkpoint and users can actually withdraw whatever funds were acknowledged by that checkpoint. So you can't actually be frozen out of your funds like you could with a sidechain on a Plasma chain. One of the biggest pointed out cons of a plasma chain is that the exit games. If a ton of users start to exit the network in mass, it could flood the layer one, making an exit very, very hard to do. There's also a lack of complexity that's purposefully been used to secure user funds with plasma, but it also limits the functionality. So they're not as functional as you might see a side chain, for example. So as you can see, sidechains and plasma, state channels, they all are severely limited in one or many ways that actually don't fully realize the Ethereum 2.0 dream. For some examples, Omise Go and Loom Network were two big examples of plasma scaling solutions for Ethereum. But now let's move on to rollups, which are the favored flavor of scaling for not just the month, but probably for the foreseeable years on Ethereum, as this is what Vitalik has said he's supporting as the de facto best practice for scaling in the short term. So let's talk about the main dish here, which is rollups. Now they're called rollups because they roll up a bunch of transactions and they fit them into a single block. So instead of a single block containing a set amount of information, it actually contains a whole lot more, which if you think about it, making blocks contain more information seems like an easy way to scale Ethereum. Of course, it's much more complex than that. What makes rollups so promising is that they don't sacrifice the security of Ethereum, but they also allow for things to be fast and inexpensive. Who doesn't want fast, cheap, and secure? It's really what we call the trilemma, security, speed, and cost. And in theory, what we've been told what we've been told for years is that you have to sacrifice one to make the other two work well. You can't have the fastest, the cheapest, and the most secure. But let's see if we can find a solution for that, because there very well might be one on the horizon. So the security issues presented by new consensus mechanisms with sidechains or exit issues with plasma and potential security issues around both of those concepts, well, those are removed because rollups actually use the core security of Ethereum. You're actually having your assets completely protected by Ethereum, and there is no qualitative drop in security when using rollups. There are two main flavors of rollups, optimistic rollups and ZK rollups. And today we're gonna to talk about a little bit of the difference between them and the projects using the different varieties of these rollups. The way to compress a bunch of data into a smaller amount of data that ZK rollups uses is by leaving a certain part of transaction off chain that isn't core to the ultimate consensus, to the ultimate outcome. And that's something that actually optimistic rollups cannot do because they need some of this information to prevent fraud and to do fraud proofs. So ZK Rollups has found a way to omit some data that optimistic rollups cannot omit. And effectively optimistic rollups behave in a way where they assume that everything is okay. They assume that there are no problems until a problem has been reported. By contrast, ZK Rollups does not make such an assumption. They actually double check and proof fraud proof everything with math. So there is a contrary opinion here where essentially you rely on the wisdom of the crowd uh, with optimistic rollups versus relying on math with ZK Rollups. Now, of course, when I phrase it like that, kind of makes ZK Rollups seem far superior superior. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and give my conclusions here, but ZK rollups do have some pretty exciting elements to them. All in all, optimistic rollups are very much so easier to access today and more likely to take effect sooner. However, ZK rollups with their math-based solution is objectively in many ways superior. However, in many people's opinions, it is not as ready for prime time. We're going to link some of the articles we used for this section in the description of this video. Specifically, we want to give a shout out to Ivan on Tech Academy for some of this research. Now, it's worth noting that the concept of optimistic rollups and how it actually arrives on putting data into the blockchain is something that stretches potentially further than just with crypto. In fact, Mark Cuban chimed in saying that he believes optimistic rollups or the way that they're structured would actually work well with media, essentially having non-for-profit media actually voted on and having high quality fact-based media essentially be determined by a consensus algorithm, much like optimistic rollups. So as you can see, 
here. There's many applications for the technologies that are being built beyond just running D apps and running different types of crypto projects. In fact, you might be able to see a lot of press go on the blockchain and you could see some very significant consensus algorithms evolve to essentially determine what is worthy of being put out as official news based on its factuality. Very interesting stuff. We just thought we'd point out here that Mark Cuban has even taken an interest in what optimistic rollups present. Currently, ZK rollups are being used on more targeted use cases, and we don't have a widespread ZK rollup implementation for Ethereum. We're seeing them used for payments and transactions and swaps, like with Loopring. We're seeing them used for NFTs, like with Immutable X and Starkware, but we haven't seen a fully robust ZK rollup based scaling solution for Ethereum go live yet, though there are a few on the near horizon. For example, ZK Sync. And to that effect, we actually have a tweet from Immutable X, who have said that they minted millions of NFTs on Immutable X's sidechain, powered by Starkware, for about 475,000 times less energy than it would have taken on layer one. So you can see you're having almost half a million X gains in efficiency with ZK rollups on NFTs. And this is quite possibly the most exciting scaling solution for NFTs to have your cake and eat it too. Carbon neutral, low emissions, high throughput, low fees, the hallowed security of Ethereum, and of course the beloved ERC721 and 1155 formats for NFTs. For me as an NFT lover, I personally value NFTs more on Ethereum. And I do believe that having scaling solutions like Immutable X are going to be invaluable at preserving the things we love about Ethereum NFTs, the open nature, uh, the interoperability, the money Legos that have been forming around Ethereum and DeFi and expanding that architecture so that it's scalable. It's really a beautiful thing. So some real important scaling solutions are Starkware, Optimism, Immutable X for NFTs, ZK Swap, ZK Sync, obviously ZK in the name lets you know this is a ZK rollups based solution. We also have Omise Go and a few others that have been at it for a while. Not to mention we have the well-documented Polygon, one of the most rock star standout coins of the entire bull run, as well as XDAI stake. So there you have it, a very simplified and cursory overview of L2 scaling solutions, the different varieties of scaling solutions, their pluses and minuses, and when we can expect for them to take flight. We're gonna be diving really deep into the specifics of each each scaling solution and what we can expect from the coming months and years from these different technology innovations. Let me know what you guys think about this overview on ETH2 scaling. And what would you like to know more about? Would you like to know more about individual projects like ZK Sync and Optimism or Arbitrum? Would you like to know more about the actual technology, the underlying consensus mechanisms and trade-offs? Now, in conclusion, I'd like to say that it's pretty clear rollups are the future of scaling. Vitalik made as much clear in his statements a few months months ago. Now, ZK rollups that are based exclusively on math seem to be the most exciting, though they also seem to be the hardest and furthest away from full realization. So while we are very close to L2 scaling, we can see a ton more optimizations coming in the very near future, especially as Ethereum does incredibly critical things like the London hard fork that introduces EIP 1559, like the move to proof of stake, like the introduction of L2s and eventually ETH 2.0 with full sharding. All of these things will incrementally and exponentially increase the productivity, the cost, the efficiency of the Ethereum L1 blockchain. But until then, we're looking at optimism, optimistic rollups, and hopefully very soon, ZK rollups to come in, save the day, and make Ethereum battle ready for mainstream adoption. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite scaling solution and why? Did you learn something from this episode? And if you did, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. It's a free and easy way to get this video in the good graces of the YouTube algorithm and show it to more people. This is one of the most important battlegrounds for crypto because as Ethereum becomes a scalable world computer, we can have a decentralized open source and immutable transaction layer and building layer for the future of finance, the future of gaming, the future of the internet. And nothing, nothing could be more exciting in my opinion than that. With that said, make sure you subscribe and put that bell notification on so you get more videos like this. If you wanna follow me on Twitter at Elio Trades, the link for that is in the description. Make sure you leave your comment in the comment section below to be entered to win a Ledger Nano S. My name's Elio Trades. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.